Hey everyone, Cam here with GameShot Games. I just got back from picking up uh, Overwatch here for the PC. Um, as you guys probably already know, uh, the servers are now officially live. So I just figured I'd do a quick PC performance review. I will be testing on a few different systems. I got my, my AMD system that has an R9-290X, an i5-4690K uh, clocked at 3.5 gigahertz and eight gigs of RAM in that system. And then on the NVIDIA side, I have two GTX 980s, an i7-3770K clocked at 4.2 gigahertz and 16 gigs of RAM in that system. Um, on my NVIDIA system, I will be doing single and SLI configurations for testing. And also on that same system, I'll be using DSR to test a few different resolutions. Uh, before we get started though, I wanna recommend updating your drivers. Both AMD and NVIDIA have made tailor-made drivers ready for this game. To take a quick look here, NVIDIA has the game ready 368.22 WHQL driver, uh, and this is supporting a new SLI profile. For the AMD side, we've got the Crimson Edition 16.5.3, and it is also supporting uh, a new multi-GPU system. I guess for AMD it is Crossfire. So uh, now that that's out of the way, uh, let's get started. So before we get started, I just wanted to do a quick run through of the graphical options. Now for the most part, this is all pretty standard, so I'm just really gonna run through it really fast. For your display mode, you got borderless, windowed, and full screen. Target display, if you have more than one monitor to, to pick from. Uh, resolution, now I will comment on this because this, this impressed me. Uh, for every resolution that's available, you have up to, you have four different Hertz options here. So you have 60, 60 hertz, 99 hertz, 119 hertz, and 144 hertz. And every single DSR factor that I have included in my NVIDIA control panel is in here. So that's everyone from 1080 to 4K has four options. That's pretty impressive. Appreciate that. Field of view uh, goes from 80 to 103. Aspect ratio, 16.9, 16.10. V-Sync is on and off. Triple buffering on and off. Display performance stats on and off. Then you got limit FPS is display based, off and 30 FPS. Graphics quality, it goes from low to epic. In your advanced, like I said, I'm gonna run through these real quick. You got render scale, texture quality, texture filtering quality, local fog detail, dynamic reflections, shadow detail, model detail, effects detail, lighting quality, anti-alias quality, and I'll mention real quick, that goes from off to low, which is FXAA, medium, SMAA low, high is SMAA medium, and ultra is SMAA high. So then you got refraction quality, screenshot quality. Uh, I will also comment on this because this is something I haven't seen before. I was pretty impressed, uh, just a you know extra little feature, but pretty cool. It goes one, three, five, seven, and nine times the resolution. So you can get some really high res screenshots. Haven't tested it yet, but uh, I will shortly. Then you got local reflections and ambient occlusion. And this kind of bummed me. This is only an on and off. I wish that there was more options to that, but I will live. And then you got your basic gamma correction, contrast, and brightness. And the last feature they add on here is another cool extra feature is colorblind options. So for anybody that needs this, I'm sure this is a great help. Uh, there's four different modes to pick from and also a strength meter. So that'll do it for the graphics options. Let's get started. So moving on to the AMD system, I just gotta point out right off the bat that I had a ton of issues on my end. None of it had anything to do with the game. Long story short, a monitor that I had just bought, a 1080p monitor, did, did not work. And because this did not work, I could not get VSR to work. I couldn't get video capture to work. So all the video capture you'll be seeing is from my other system. So monitor wise, I had to use what I had on hand, which unfortunately ended up being a 1280 by 1024p old Dell monitor. And I get it, this is far from what we would consider up to code or standard. But with Overwatch's render scale at 150%, I was able to get very close to 1080p on a strictly numbers basis. I know this is far from perfect, but it's all I had on hand. I debated throwing out the AMD section altogether but I figured I would just add it with the disclaimer. 
And as for performance stats, you won't have to completely take my word for it as I do have some MSI Afterburner log screenshots. So I will be posting those up. Now that all that's out of the way, I played as long as I could with the time I had left after this whole debacle. And with the graphics cranked to epic, plus adjusting the SMAA to the highest setting, it ran flawlessly. I didn't see a single stutter. And not only that, the frames had only dropped from 60, maybe only a couple times that I saw. It was buttery smooth constantly. I don't know that I've ever played a game that was so polished, so pristine on day one as this game was. I'm very impressed with Blizzard. So these are the MSI Afterburner screenshots showing the log from the AMD system. During gameplay, the GPU usage stayed at 100% almost constantly. That is incredible. There's a couple dips here and there, but we're talking almost 100% constantly. That's crazy. Memory usage on the R9290X was at 1290. That's also very constant. Went up a couple times. Its max was 1542. Frame rate, as I said, is a straight line, 60 FPS. It almost does not budge at all. And so this is the next screenshot. This one shows the CPU usage. CPU one usage stayed around 69. It had a couple ups and downs, but it was around 69%. CPU two usage, was it at about 58%? CPU 3, 48, and CPU 4, 47-ish. And RAM usage used up about 47, 28, almost in a constant straight line. So that does it for the AMD. I know that wasn't very in-depth, but as I mentioned before, I had to use what I had. So on to the next system. So moving on next to NVIDIA, I expected to see a lot of what I saw with the AMD card, which was incredible performance a lack of bottleneck on CPU and GPU, and I got a whole lot of the same, a bunch of incredible performance. And because of this, I did test 1080 and 1440, but the single, just a single GTX 980 was so overpowering it, I just skipped those all together and went uh, straight to 2880 by 1620. I will say though that there was no bottlenecking at all. I was getting very high GPU usage in the high 90s the entire time and performance was perfectly smooth. I just figured it'd be almost a waste of time to cover these smaller resolutions. So a 2880-1620, my frame rate was about 69-ish was the lowest, and it was jumping up between the high 70s, low 80s, jumped up into 90s a couple times, but for the most part, it hovered right around the high 70s, low 80s. My GPU usage was at 99%, almost the entire time. Every time I looked up, it was 99%. I did not see it budge once. Now, it might have, but I did not see it at all. For the 980's VRAM usage, I was getting around 2,000 to 2,400. It bounced down to, to around 2,000 a few times. For, for the most part, it stayed up between 22 and 2,400. For CPU usage, and I will point out, I did have hyper-threading turned off for this game. But for CPU usage, I hovered around between 70 and 80 almost constantly. A few jumps into the above that toward 90, but I would say low 80s almost constantly for CPU usage. As for RAM usage, I stayed just below 5,000. And as with most of the numbers here, it was constant. Just solid, didn't budge at all. So next up for the single 980 was 4K. The frame rate now, instead of sitting at the high 70s, low 80s, even jumping up to 90, is now sitting at the high 60s to high 70s. And the VRAM usage, instead of sitting at 2000 to 2400, sat at 2900 pretty much constantly. So that's it for the single GPU. I don't wanna to waste too much time since the numbers are so similar. Let's jump to the SLI. And so lastly, we got the two 980s and SLI. And I just have to say, this is the closest to perfect SLI scaling as I've ever seen. As I mentioned before, the single 980 was getting frame rate in the high 60s to high 70s. Now with the two 980s and SLI, I was getting 144 frames per second almost constantly. As you may have already deduced, that's almost exactly double the frames per second as the single GPU. And GPU usage was high as well. Both GPUs sat around 85% with a few dips into the higher 70s and a few jumps into the higher 90s. GPU usage was high as well. 
Both 980s sat around 85% most of the time, with a few drops into the higher 70s and a few bumps up into the lower 90s. CPU scaling also improved, with most of them sitting around 70 to 75 most of the time, with only a few occasional dips. As you may be able to see up in the corner, one of the numbers is way off of what it should be as far as the VRAM usage, but I ran another test to double check, and the VRAM usage sat at about 3200 most of the time. For one last test, I disabled VSync and tried both the single and double GPU configurations, and it was almost, like I said, an almost perfect SLI scaling. The single GPU still sat around 80 or so, but the double GPU jumped up to around 155. Now that is almost perfect. So that'll do it for the performance review of Overwatch. If you want to be kept up to date with things like this and other gaming news, be sure to like and subscribe. And don't forget to check back in a couple days as I will be giving a performance review of the new GTX 1080 Founders Edition. Hope to catch you on the next one. Game on.